Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. First graphic up again is the uh, breakup map for the 22nd of May, and all of the uh, rivers south of the Brooks Range now have finished uh, with breakup. Even the uh, No Attack River there has uh, some too mostly open, and so no threat of any ice jam flooding is uh, will occur there and the North Slope rivers uh, Colville still a, quite a stretch of unknown with uh, some open there around Umiat airfield or the Umiat observing site and then on down from there it is mostly ice right on out to the Arctic coast Kaparik still mostly ice the entire stretch and the uh, Saguan River showing mostly open the upper stretches, some open a little farther down than solid ice on out to the, or mostly ice on out to the Arctic coast there. There's a chance uh, there could be some ice jams that may form there here before breakup finishes up there. But nothing in the forecast. And we'll see for the uh, hazardous weather graphics, there are no watches, warnings, or advisories anywhere around the state for either fire, floods, or any type of uh, weather conditions for the next, uh, well, for tonight and through tomorrow, the way it looks at this point in time. Fire danger, still showing uh, extreme fire danger over the upper Yukon Valley and the flats there, extending down toward Eagle. And uh, an area of high fire danger, really uh, west and north of the Alaska Range, pushing up to the eastern Brooks Range and into the eastern Kuskokwim Valley, kind of a uh, spot there on the west side, or over toward the uh, western slopes of the Western Brooks Range there in the Cuscombe Valley. Otherwise, that is really cut off from the clouds and moisture to the west, low fire dangers there. And then southwest of Fairbanks, another extreme high fire danger area. Temperatures in the uh, around 70 at mid-afternoon up in the Tanaw Valley around Fairbanks. The winds were gusting up to about 25 miles an hour out of the south-southeast. And with humidities down around 20%, that uh, makes for extreme fire conditions. Moving on to satellite imagery. You can see uh, low pressure backing westward now after uh, tracking eastward along the Aleutians, pulled north late yesterday and overnight. Now pulling back to the west uh, across the Perloss today. And that front uh, strung out across southern Alaska down off the southeast coast. Uh, a little more potent down uh, coming into the uh, southern panhandle there, kind of a wave off to the southwest, bringing uh, moderate to heavy rain to the southern panhandle with a little bit of an increase in the winds there, 20 gusts, maybe 35 miles an hour, and uh, just under gale force uh, along the coast. And also some uh, pretty good rainfall pushing up into uh, Prince William Sound where Portage Valley, the observing site there, reported one and two thirds inches in the last 12 hours actually uh, less than less time than that with winds kicked up to 60 miles an hour out of the east uh, at about 11 a.m. and winds gusting 35 miles an hour turning an arm today Palmer seeing gust 25 or no 30 miles an hour there out of the northeast at times and uh, as I mentioned areas over the interior seen winds in the 20 25 mile an hour range otherwise lots of clouds and uh, areas of light rain, fog, and drizzle there over the Bering Sea and Aleutians due to that low near the uh, Perbolof Islands. And uh, clouds along the Arctic coast, lower conditions in the west. It was uh, mostly clear on the eastern Arctic coast again today, like yesterday. And then we had some lower clouds and mixed precipitation, although it was light for the western Arctic coast and light showers extended into the northwest interior along that trough and into the Yukon Delta, but amounts are generally less than a tenth of an inch in, uh, during the day today. And some showers over the uh, western Cook Inlet area and then the area of rain from Turnigan Arm and Prince William Sound eastward along the North Gulf Coast. Uh, not quite getting into Yakutat yet, but something should here shortly. And then the heaviest rain occurring over the southern Pano or Ketchikan picked up half an inch in three hours this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, some light rain over Kodiak and showers with the Alaska Peninsula and that low uh, back pulling back to the west there near the Pribloss will actually drift a little back to the east tonight by late tonight and several troughs rotating around the southern quadrant of that will keep the Aleutians showery and cloudy. 
IFR expected across all the Bering Sea and Aleutians through the Strait. Could be some flurries, fog along the uh, central western Arctic coast, maybe an increase in the fog on the east side of that's been having trouble forming. Fair over the interior and a good shot of rain with that front for the southeast coast. Maybe some locally gusty winds with nothing too serious and stays wet along the uh, Prince William Sound area into the Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, dry over the interior. Outlook for tomorrow. Periods of showers or rain, cloudy skies, Copper River Basin into the Manuska Susitna Valley, northern Cook Inlet, tapering off down the inlet, chance of showers for Kodiak, periods of light rain, fog and drizzle along the entire North Gulf Coast, and lingering rain over the northern Panhandle, but showers tapering off, possibly ending over Prince of Wales Island, maybe Ketchikan and Net. But don't look for much clearing. Low pressure still meandering around out over the eastern Bering Sea near the Pergolof Islands, and that keeps it, uh, again, cloudy, damp, drizzle, fog, light rain, or one of the three with uh, near IFR conditions across, uh, well, from the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island, all the way down along the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula area. The interior, again, north of the Alaska Range, variable clouds, highs in the uh, 70s once again and uh, possible afternoon sunshine for the north slope, better chance for the Brooks Range, little clouds and fog lingering along the Arctic coast in areas, and that'll extend on down into the Bering Strait. Otherwise, uh, weak high pressure trying to develop, out, or it is developing over the far western Bering Sea, so something of a break coming into the Shimianatu area, and we'll see that warm front that I had on there just sort of washes out completely doesn't amount to much and we have a weak area high pressure really more of an area uh, lack of storminess than really a presence of high pressure out there but that'll make for light winds and generally cloudy skies and that persistent low holds near the Perbolofs for continued uh, low clouds fog light rain drizzle showers over the central eastern Aleutians and other trough swings into the southwest coast Bristol Bay area bringing a chance of showers from Kodiak Island up across the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta look for shower chances of uh, the Kuskokwim Valley to the western Alaska range periods of rain Copper River Basin showers into the uh, upper Tanaw Valley 40 mile country areas with uh, showers for the North Gulf Coast and cloudy wet conditions for Memorial Day in store for the Southeast Coast and kind of a mixed weather situation over the interior with some sun and showers scattered around and then low clouds and fog again along the Arctic Coast. Moving on to low temperatures for Sunday morning, mid to upper 20s, Arctic Coast North Slope, gradually climbing uh, near 40 for the uh, Brooks Range and mid to upper 40s for the central and western interior, lower to mid 40s, southern Alaska, upper 40s for the Panhandle, lower 40s or upper 30s to lower 40s for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Highs for tomorrow, 70, 75 central eastern interior areas, again, north of the Alaska Range. South of the mountains, though, 50s to maybe lower 60s if you're lucky in some areas. Lower 50s, Kodiak Island. Lower to mid 50s for the Panhandle. Near 50 for the Alaska Peninsula. Lower to mid 40s for the western central Aleutians and the Perbolofs. Mid 30s for St. Lawrence Island. Near freezing along the Arctic coast. Some areas, though, getting above the frost point, like over at Kaktovik, forecast I-37. Then upper 20s for the lows the following morning, Monday morning and uh, near 50 for the upper Yukon Valley, 40s elsewhere, 30s or near 40 for the Bering Sea, 35 to 40 and Bristol Bay area. Followed by highs for Memorial Day afternoon near 70. A little cooler now, uh, upper Yukon Valley, most areas staying in the 60s, 55 to 60 southern Alaska, 50s for the Panhandle and uh, upper 40s lower 50s for the southwest coast, Bering Sea in the 40s, mid 30s for the Northern Bering Sea. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Sunday morning's flying weather graphics showing a lot of IFR, North Slope, Arctic Coast, right through the Bering Strait, Northern Seward Peninsula as well, and then across St. Lawrence Island, all of the Bering Sea and Aleutians have a pretty good chance of uh, seeing some IFR. Next ends into Cuscoom Bay, Cape Newenham, across the southern Cuscoom Valley, expands over southern Cook Inlet, uh, pushing up toward Kenai, most of the Kenai Peninsula, and Prince William Sound, Copper River Basin, right up to the Alaska Range, north of the mountains there, VFR, Southern Brooks Range, Yukon River, right on down to the deltas, marginal VFR for the Panhandle. And then for Sunday afternoon, 
the IFR in the southern southeast coast becomes marginal in the afternoon, and that's uh, pretty much the case for the entire southeast coast, inside waters and all. IFR North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, kind of a swath of marginal VFR now. Cook Inlet, Manus goes to sit in the Valley Copper River Basin, northwest across uh, Denali Park to the uh, Nolato Hills there to around Kotzebue, VFR to the north and northeast of that area and also to the southeast and then no change for the Bering Sea, Aleutians, North Slope, Arctic Coast, all IFR. That continues through Monday, IFR holds and is pretty widespread again for the Arctic Coast North Slope through the Bering Strait, all the Bering Sea, all the Aleutians, most of the Alaska Peninsula, Southwest Kodiak Island, IFR, IFR extending up into uh, Southern Kenai Peninsula, Resurrection Bay, Prince William Sound, across the Talkeetnas to the Central Alaska Range, and marginal for the Panhandle. Afternoon, not too bad Western and Central Interior areas, VFR, but uh, Northern Koyukuk, Kobuk Valleys, Notak Valley, marginal VFR becomes IFR in the North Slope and Arctic Coast. Looks like some IFR now for the uh, uh, 40 Mile Country, Upper Tanaw Valley, uh, well south of Eagle though, but more likely around uh, Nebesna, Toke, Northway, otherwise uh, marginal VFR for the Copper River Basin, VFR Northern Cook Inlet, marginal along the coast, VFR now for the Panhandle, the interior, no change out west, and Anatovic, marginal VFR at times tomorrow, especially in the morning hours, same forecast for Adigan, <coughs> and for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, Rainy looks marginal, as does windy, especially southern entrance. And for Isabel, marginal VFR at times. And Mentasta, mostly VFR throughout the day Sunday. While Tanita, pretty good chance at some point in the day tomorrow will be uh, VFR flying. And for Portage, really no change. IFR, uh, better conditions may be marginal on the western entrance. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. Taking a look at the freezing levels, 8,000 feet uh, over the eastern interior there, 6,000 feet up and well off the Arctic coast, and more or less 6,000 feet on down the panhandle, a little cooler, Kenai Peninsula to Kodiak Island, 4,000 feet, and then chillier yet, 2,000 feet for the Alaska Peninsula, Southern Bering Sea, and the Aleutians. Taking a look at the icing with the uh, moisture stacking up along the North Gulf Coast there in that southeasterly flow. Looks like some areas of considerable moderate, especially uh, terrain enhanced areas there all along the coast range into uh, say Glacier Bay and Western Prince William Sound. Otherwise like to isolate a moderate rime icing around that area extending down toward Dixon entrance and then a zone of probably mixed icing there over the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians, but uh, very isolated, moderate, mostly light there. And from there, looking at the upper level wind flow chart, you can see uh, Pacific Jet westerly, 120 knots, takes a turn to the northeast and then splits there over the western or southwest Gulf of Alaska. Uh, it's 55 knot winds out of the southeast across the Kenai Peninsula southwest interior. They're coming up and around that upper level ridge over the eastern and northeast interior of the state. 9,000 feet, low pressure, not too far from the Pribloss north of the eastern Aleutians there and maybe 35 knots southeast winds into the eastern North Gulf Coast while at 3,000 feet uh, got kind of a tight low into the northeast Gulf or uh, off the eastern North Gulf Coast so 45 knot winds pretty brisk there and otherwise the interior pretty light and variable with a couple of weak low centers and then the main low out near the Pribilof Islands but winds not much of a factor with that turbulence occasional moderate chop uh, eastern North Gulf Coast into the mountains there Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder, and joining me today is Cindy Preller. She's the Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska Region's National Weather Service. And Cindy, we hear a lot about tsunamis in the news, probably a lot more than we used to, but let's remind everybody, what is a tsunami? Thanks for having me, Dave. Sure. A uh, tsunami is basically, it's really simple, it's just a disturbance in the water column. Uh -huh. So the entire water column from the seafloor to the sea surface is disturbed by something major. Okay. usually a major earthquake. But it can also be a volcanic eruption, even an asteroid. Landslide is uh, especially dangerous. Okay, so if I'm sitting in my bathtub and I drop a bath toy, 
that could be a bathtub tsunami. It is absolutely a bathtub tsunami. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. So Alaska is one of the states, or maybe the state, with the greatest amount of coastline. So tsunamis are a pretty major risk here in Alaska. Who is most at risk? Yeah, Alaska is uh, significant. We actually make most of the Pacific tsunamis wow, okay. on the Aleutian Trench. Mm -hmm. um, and it's where the Pacific Plate is subducting underneath the, um, uh, the American Plate. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we produce some very large, great, great quakes, and of course, the most at risk is the Aleutian Trench. Okay. But that extends into southeast, uh, south central Alaska as well. Mm -hmm. They're at huge risk, and then southeast Alaska's risk is really mostly landslide focused. Okay. Are there any places along the Alaskan coastline that don't have a tsunami risk, or at least a very, very low risk? Absolutely. The Bering Sea's risk is very low, mm -hmm. and the Arctic's risk is very low as well. Okay, so when we're talking about tsunami dangers, those are places that need to be monitored, but probably not really. No, I mean, I won't say never. Yeah, sure. Because I know better. Yeah, science knows better. Right, so Very good. near to never. Okay, <laughs> well, let's just say you're on the coast anywhere in Alaska. What are warning signs that tsunami uh, dangers are, are threatening you right now? This is super important because Alaska's greatest risk, especially mm -hmm. out on the Aleutians and South Central, is a near field tsunami. And then, okay. of course, the landslides in Southeast, it's even more intense because we so can't. So, shorter warning time? Sh no warning time. Okay. The earthquake is the warning. Okay. And that is the most important thing for anybody to, to remember. The water can arrive in less than two minutes. Two minutes, wow. Yeah, at the National Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, mm -hmm. we need to get the warning out in five minutes. So, for those near field tsunamis, mm -hmm. It's the earthquake is the warning. So okay. if you feel shaking, okay. and of course the first thing you do is drop cover and hold, right. and you need to start counting okay. slowly to 20. The right way. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Oh, I, I teach kids to do it with their favorite things. So okay. one chocolate, two chocolate, three chocolate, Chocolate's but you can good. count anything you like. Okay. And if you're thinking of something happy, that mm -hmm. helps. Okay. Uh, especially helps kids, but it'll help your so psyche. So you speed up because you're getting stressed out. I right, see. right. It actually lowers your heart rate. Interesting. You know, okay. so if you think of something you love and um, and practice that, so you're in an earthquake, you're mm -hmm. under the table, you're next to the ocean. Okay. Right. Right. This is this is important if you're next to the ocean. Okay. If you're not next to the ocean, don't worry about it. Just stay in place, under cover. And you're talking about a mile, a quarter mile. What's what's close? Um. A mile, even a couple miles. Okay. You know, our rule of thumb used to be a mile inland was safe, but the last few tsunamis have taught mm -hmm. us otherwise. Okay. So, yeah, you know, in Japan we had inundation up to 10 miles. Right. So. Okay. And that was a big quake. That was a big so quake. So you have a quake, you're counting slowly to 20. To 20. What's next? And if you get to 20 and it's still mm -hmm. shaking, mm -hmm. you need to evacuate. Okay. And that is, um, that's scary. Yeah. Because you're that's evacuating a in a live event that's still shaking. Mm -hmm. You know, 1964 shook for four and a half minutes. Um, Indonesia shook for 12 minutes. Wow, right. Um, Japan, I think, shook for six. I'm not sure of that, but it was long. Anyway, more right. than 20 seconds. And that's a sign of a very major earthquake, the, mm -hmm. the worst. Well, 20 seconds is a magnitude seven. So that's okay. not the worst, but what a magnitude seven can do is trigger a landslide. Okay. And those landslides might be a submarine landslide, so mm -hmm. you won't see it, you won't hear it, you won't know it, and then okay. the water's moving. Okay. So that's really, really, really dangerous. That's what happened in 64 first. Seward, Valdez, Whittier all had mm -hmm. landslides first. Okay. And when you're talking about the water, the water is a warning sign too. What happens with the water that gives you a very easy visual sign that something's changing? Not guaranteed. It might go out, mm -hmm. it might go way out, really okay. fast, fast enough to leave the fish behind. Mm -hmm. But that's not guaranteed. It might just be a fast flood instead. Okay. So either way, if it's acting like a super fast rising tide, faster than a tide should rise, right. get out of there. Okay. And if it goes out really fast, get out of there. Yeah. You know, we lost a lot of lives because people will go check out the new tide pools or sure. pick up fish or shells or, you know, so. And it should feel weird. Right. You know, you should, it should be weird. So pay attention to those natural warning signs and how you feel because mm -hmm. those, those are maybe the only clues you have. Right, and you know, sound also. Um, you okay. can hear a tsunami. It'll sound like a roaring train maybe. Okay. Um, or it might sound silent because the water's been pulled out. Right. And that's pretty weird. Imagine camping yeah. at night yeah. near the beach 
and all of a sudden you don't hear the ocean anymore. That would be different. That would be weird. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And then you also might hear blowing bubbles, and, and that's actually from the pressure that's blowing the air out from the sand grains, rock grains. So if you hear blowing bubbles, that's a little weird. Okay. Or uh, clinking rocks, you know, like a rain stick. Uh -huh. So those are those are the sound signs. So the visual is rushing in or mm -hmm. rushing out and um, roaring, especially. Okay. Yeah. So it takes a lot of work to get people uh, and keep people aware of what the tsunami warning signs are and what their risks are around Alaska. And there's a website that can help them do that. Uh, where can they go online to get more information for their school, their home, their church, their business? Oh, there's several. Um, okay. The National Tsunami Warning Center mm -hmm. has a website as well. And the easiest way to look that up is just NTWC. NTWC. Mm -hmm. The okay. URL is not uh, intuitive at all. Okay. Um, there's also um, ready.alaska.gov. The mm -hmm. state of Alaska has a lot of helpful stuff. Um, preparedness kits, they have, they have everything you need to get ready. Okay. And then um, for teachers and mm -hmm. others, there's a wonderful curriculum called um, Alaska Tsunami Education Program. Alaska Tsunami Education Program. Okay. And that's AK Tsunami. AK Tsunami. Okay, very good. Those are really good uh, tips to get more information and search that out and uh, help your own community stay safe with the threat of tsunamis around Alaska. Uh, next time we come back and talk to you some more about the Tsunami Ready Program and get more in depth on uh, how people can. Uh, learn more about the, the risks and, and what to do here in Alaska. So thank you for joining us today, Cindy. And next time on Alaska Weather Facts, more on tsunamis around Alaska. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the sea ice analysis. Uh, None around Nunavak Island now, and still a little bit along the Yukon Delta coast, but diminishing by the moment. And uh, still an area north of St. Lawrence Island and a heavier ice area there. Looks like uh, where it looked like it was breaking in the southern area yesterday. Now it looks uh, solid again. So moving on to the coastal water forecast, south winds, southwest winds at 15 knots with eight foot seas for the south coast, small craft advisory for southwest winds 25 knots, nine foot seas on the north coast. Actually, small craft advisories the entire length of the coastline there due to the eight foot seas on the south coast. Inside water, southerlies 15 knots, seas three to four feet. Lynn Canal, small craft advisories for southerly winds at 25 knots with six foot seas. And then for Monday, Memorial Day, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, south at 15. Winds stay light over the inside waters. Uh, Stevens Passage, Southerlies at 10, Clarence Strait, same thing, south winds 10 knots, seas 2 feet. West winds at 10 knots for the south coast, seas now down to 7 feet, and southwest breeze 10 to 15 knots, 6 to 7 foot seas on the north coast. Cook Inlet, Southerlies tomorrow at 15 knots, same forecast for Kamishak Bay, and for the uh, North Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, southwest winds 15, maybe 20 knots, especially around Middleton Island, southeast 15 for Prince William Sound. And for Monday, variable to southeast, 10 knots for the sound, and light south winds at 10 knots for the North Gulf Coast with 5 to 6 foot seas. Kamishak Bay, Barren Island, southeast of 15. Cook Inlet, southerlies, 10 to 15 knots with 3 to 4 foot seas. Kodiak Island, uh, south to southwest, 15 knots, 4 to 7 foot seas. Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, uh, south side, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, southerlies at 20 knots, 7 foot seas. Bering Sea side, south 15, three foot sea, southeast 15 for Bristol Bay. And for the uh, southern side of the uh, Alaska Peninsula, south winds at 20 knots, top side, south 20, seas five feet, and southeast 15 for Bristol Bay, south to southeast 15 knot winds for Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait. And for Unalaska Island, southwest, 10 to 25 knots with small craft advisories uh, south of the island. And Unmak Island, small craft advisories west-northwest 25, northwest 25 for the central Aleutians, and northwest 20 for the areas from Amchitka to Shimia. And then on Monday, west winds 10 to 20 knots, Shimia to Amchitka, central Aleutians west at 20, and southwest 20 for the Fox Island, 6 to 7 foot seas. Southwest coast tomorrow, southeast winds, 15 knots, two to three foot seas, southeast 15 for the Pribilofs and north 20, St. Matthew Island, small craft advisory, St. Lawrence Island, northerly winds picking up to 25 knots with four foot seas, but lighter in Norton Sound. 
And for Monday, Southeast 15 for St. Lawrence Island with east winds at 20 knots for the Yukon Delta Coast, Cuscombe Delta Coast, Southeast 15, 5 foot sea, Southwest 15 for the Pirlos with 5 foot seas and St. Matthew Island. Those winds will be out of the northeast at 20 knots. And for the uh, Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, we've got brisk wind advisories continuing tomorrow. For easterlies, 25 to 30 knots, Central Coast, uh, east at 20 and even lighter on the west side, northeast at 15, turn northerly 15 knots down to Cape Thompson, and then Cape Thompson to Wales, northerly at 20 knots with four foot seas. Outlook for Monday, southwest 15 knots, Wales to Cape Thompson, and then Cape Thompson up the west side of the Arctic coast there, northeast 10 to 15, central coast east at 15, lighter winds for the east side 20 to 25 knots, strongest toward demarcation point. And for tonight, again, look for areas of fog and low clouds, especially central and western coast, and to a lesser extent in the east side, maybe a few flurries, but nothing significant, and cloudy skies for the north slope, interior variably cloudy, fair with light winds, and chance of showers still along the yukon Cusquam Delta, scattered isolated showers, Bristol Bay, unsettled in the Bering Sea, and a good shot of rain rolls in, or continues in the Panhandle tonight and stays damp along the North Gulf Coast. That'll continue into Sunday, but lighter rainfall amounts possibly ending over the Southern Panhandle. And the interior again, Tanaw Valley, Upper Yukon Valley, central part of the state, 70 to 75 for your afternoon highs. No change for the Arctic Coast, except probably drier on the west side. And low pressure near the Perloffs keeps the Bering Sea unsettled and damp uh, for Sunday and Memorial Day and stays damp over the southeast interior on down the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.